first reading, a proposed law to alter the Constitution and for related purposes. In accordance with Standing Order 222AA and the practice of Parliament, the proposed law now stands referred to the Permanent Parliamentary Committee on Constitutional Law and Act and Subordination Legislation. Clark. Order of the day, number 70. Questionable amendment, declaration of Papua New Guinea as a Christian country. Law 2023, Minister for Justice and Attorney General Ted Reddin, second required opportunity for debate and second vote from 15 February. Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I present the report of the permanent parliamentary. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me correct. In accordance with the standing orders 2227 as F, I move that the present lobby now read the third time and the comments on the comments the second required opportunity for debate. The question is that a question be put. I'll, I'll allow you to make a debate. Honorable uh, Provincial uh, Member for ECPIC. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. In the previous debate on the same bill, I explained to the House that I had been asked by the Catholic Church to debate against the bill. And to preface my debate, I want to say that for the people of Sipi in general, we have been served by the Catholic Church for over 100 years in terms of medical and education. So, in my view, even though I am not a Catholic myself, I think that in respect of my constituents, if the leadership of the Catholic Church requires me to present them, uh, their arguments on this floor, then I should. In addition to that, these interventions were actually made by the Catholic bishops to the Constitutional Law Reform Commission and the Constitutional Law Reform Commission refused to accept the submission from the authority of that particular Christian church, Mr. Acting Speaker. So, what was presented on this floor was done without taking into account proper submissions written and presented to the CLRC. So, in fact, it was a defective advice that was presented to us, Mr. Mr. Acting Speaker. Honorable Governor, we have a point of order. Prime Minister, what's your point of order? I think the bill was assisted by a report for, and the work from CLRC. And I just want to place it on record. The bill came through the due process. The Constitutional Law Reform Commission got get it, get it, views of our people. 97% of our people expressed that this parliament declared our country as a president. Uh, Honourable Governor, I'll allow you to... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I mean, these claims by the Prime Minister of 97% of the people of Papua New Guinea are green. He needs to present such evidence on this floor. Yeah. The Catholic Church represents at least 30% of the population of this country. At least. And they are the authority on matters to do with religion in terms of Christian religion. But you mean on a harem talk law? And when I'm kind of leadership where authorities on matters such as this only present him argument long, you mean ignoring. I don't think that's good enough, Mr. Acting Speaker. So, here is a document by the Catholic bishops. Honorable Governor, we have another point of order. Uh, the Honorable uh, Member for Okapa, what's your point of order? 
I believe you are a chairman of the CRC. Yes, yes. Hi. Let me uh, hear you. Mr. Speaker, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this time to respond as the chairman of our Constitutional Law Reform Commission. Sorry? Uh, honorable uh, honorable uh, member, and if you'd like to debate on the statement made by the governor, I would not allow you to, but I can allow you to make a, make a debate after the governor as a chairman. I'll hear your point of order. What's your point of order? My point of order is that, yes, uh, in fact, the invitation was given to some of the, uh, all the churches in the country to come and contribute. Uh, on that, uh, this uh, t terms of reference as we carried out across the country. Some came, some didn't come, so this is something that I can report to Parliament probably in the next session from, as I get advice from uh, CLRC. But I was there physically myself, Mr. Speaker, to carry this uh, out. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, uh, Opposition Leader, I have to make a ruling on the. Uh, Member's point of order. I think uh, the member. I understand that the member of Okapa is also the chairman of the committee, and he's trying to explain on what the committee have been doing. In order, this is the debate in what the bill is in front of us, and allow, allow the governor to uh, continue on to his debate. And whoever or even the chairman want to so in debate in correction of other statement, I can allow that to happen. And I'll allow the governor to. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I think it clearly demonstrates that no report was presented to the parliament. Yes, so yes, the statement yes, by yes. the prime minister is actually untrue. Who is the basis for all of this? So if I may, if I may, if I may continue, obviously the parliament is operating without the benefit of the report in order to pass this bill. I think we need to we need to be clear on that. That's right. Now, if I may, this is from the authority of the Catholic Church, and I will present this on the floor as requested by them. I will not read through the whole thing except to say that the Catholic bishops, and I quote, through this submission, the Catholic Bishop Conference intends to respectfully manifest that all considered we do not deem it necessary to introduce amendments to the current PNG Constitution, particularly the preamble, the national goals, and the directive principles. Where it says, Section 45, freedom of conscience, thought, and religion. We basically answer no. Honorable Governor, we have a point of order. Honorable Minister, what's your point of order? Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I find it rather difficult to understand when the Archbishop of Catholic Church is the Chairman of PNG Council of Churches, which is supporting this bill. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, we'll take note of your point of order, uh, Honorable Governor. Again, Mr. Acting Speaker, I hold an official letter from the Catholic bishops. My, my good leader does not have a letter supporting what he claims. So, so let me just say that uh, the Catholic bishops have a right to be heard on this floor. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The Catholic citizens of ECP have a right to be heard on this floor. Respect him, all Catholic people, blow me. And Pastor Olya? Go ahead, go ahead. Can you sit down? Um, we have a point of order. Should I go and make him sit down? Governor, we have a point of order. Honorable member for Miduram, you have the floor. What's your point of order? Uh, me point of order, blue me, Morsham. You may not change him law, now you may not make him one plus something. You may talk, talk, oh, let him this la pinchy or some Christian nation. Catholic and Christian. Or Narapla denomination and Christian. Why now you may talk, talk, plant along this plan? And point of order, blow me. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, member for Ramu, I take note of your 
Khomeini is just like you debating again the uh, debate that is made my governor. So enough, you had in time, Blomi, because All online debate. Thank you. you. Still have 13 minutes to go. <laughs> Number one reason why all Catholic bishops, all is strong, all same you may not can send him law, I'm only talk all same. Religious freedom is non-negotiable. We treasure our faith and we promote it. However, the language of the Constitutional Directive number three, issued on the 11th of May 2021 by the head of state by virtue of his power under Section 12.1 of the Constitution. Constitutional and Law Reform Commission Act 2004 to direct an inquiry on the declaration of Papua New Guinea as a Christian country implies that the goal of the envisioned amendments is for a revised constitution to have some sort of coercive power over those who do not, do not immediately identify themselves as believers and Christians. Catholic Church. Government actions to ensure that PNG citizens absolutely acknowledge God and adopt Christian values would violate the religious freedom guaranteed in the Constitution itself at Section 45. B. Government actions to ensure that PNG citizens absolutely acknowledge God and adopt Christian values would violate the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, of which Papua New Guinea is a signatory. C. Government actions to ensure that PNG citizens absolutely acknowledge God and adopt Christian values would violate teachings and documents of the Catholic Church, such as the Vatican Council declares that the human person has a right to religious freedom. This freedom means that all men are to be immune from coercion on the part of individuals or of social groups or of any human power in such a way that no one needs to be forced to act in a manner contrary to his own beliefs, whether privately or publicly, whether alone or in association with others within due limits. The preamble to the Constitution already pledges to guard and pass on Christian principles. Number three, Christianity in Papua New Guinea is constituted of a variety of groups. It would be inappropriate and oppressive for the government to decide which set of beliefs counted as acknowledging God and adopting Christian values. For example, most mainline churches oppose polygamy. Would all PNG citizens be forced to adopt monogamy? What about the death penalty or other issues on which options, opinions sharply differ? Some Christians would support the death penalty, while others would not. Who would decide which group of Christians is correct? Is it the government of the day? That is simply unthinkable. Moving on. Number four, the Constitution was inspired and drafted by good Christian leaders. Strong Christian values are already present in the Constitution. They are expressed in the language of laws and rights, which is proper for a founding legal document. The Constitution is not a theological document. Hebrew and Christian scriptures that are ours now speak repeatedly of showing mercy, especially to the poor and unfortunate, practicing justice. Moving on. Proposal. In our view, there is no need for constitutional amendments to declare Papua New Guinea a Christian country. It already is one. Yes, yes. As Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. It is inappropriate for the government to use its coercive powers and the courts to ensure that its citizens adopt certain religious practices and beliefs. It is not that I want merely to be called a Christian, but to actually be one. Yes, if I prove to be one, then I can have the name. Come fire, cross, battling with wild beasts, wrenching of bones, mangling of limbs, crushing of my whole body, cruel tortures of the devil. Only let me get to Jesus Christ. This is a quotation from Ignatius of Antioch, 
dated 108 years after Christ. While superseding the idea of constitutional amendments, a public declaration of renewed Christian commitment could be made and promoted by the churches in cooperation with the parliament and the government on Independence Day, the 16th of September of every year. This would aim at upholding the true spirit of the constitutional preamble to guard and pass on to those who come after us our noble traditions and the Christian principles and pass on to those who come after us. And reminding everyone of the constant efforts at humility, conversion and inclusiveness that comes with it. Mr. Acting Speaker. Mino Man Lulotu, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Tasol mi karim. Tok tok blong online is a leading church no province for me. He can put him no here. Mami table him. And I want to say to all those Christians that are in this house. One man much wiser than me once said. One am something blo Caesar, you blo give him no Caesar. One am something blo God, you blo give him no blo God. This la house. Built after the Abelam tradition. M house blo Caesar. Larim something blo Caesar, you no can mix with them something blo God. Yes, Thank yes, you. Yes. Yes. The Honorable... Uh, I seek leave to tender these documents. Yes. Uh, leave granted. The Honourable Member for Kandep. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. To that, probably three points. First, I listen to the letter to this Parliament uh, by the Catholic Church. There's a uh, lot of substance in there. We can overlook those substances. I think what I'm saying does make a lot of sense. At the same time, you look at the bill, the bill doesn't hurt anyone. Probably we put those two together, the bill does take into consideration the views of the Catholic Church. And Catholic Church is a very big population in Papua New Guinea. And we can, this parliament can consider the views. But the law that addresses the preamble of the Constitution uh, by uh, uh, identifying Papua New Guinea as a Christian country, it probably does not really hurt the, the Catholic view. If you look at the law and look at the views that raised by the Catholic view, probably they are in the same area, but the Catholic view is just cautioning that let's be careful, that let's not impeach on the, uh, the freedom of people choosing to believe what they want to believe. That is the view. But if you look at the bill before the parliament, it really does not uh, bridge that right or that uh, freedom, but it does uh, give a name uh, in the term of religion that this, this country can be called a Christian country. But just that's my view, humble view, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I uh, choose not to be a person who knows about the Bible uh, because I'm not in that trinity. I'm a politician, but I do uh, borrow some wisdom from the book from the Bible. And I'd like to humbly ask to you, Deputy Speaker, if my colleague members and PhD could look at Hebrews 8, verse 6 to 12, and I read this. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. What does that mean? Mr. Deputy Speaker, to write God's laws in our hearts means that we internalize internally within us characteristically the importance of those laws. We understand them, we believe them, we use them as the guiding principles of our lives and we do so joyfully, uh, not out of a serious or sense of obligation or requirement, but you do it because you do it cheerfully within your heart. I last time came from a more technical perspective, the same view, but I say that we have had the Bible on the floor, a 460 years old uh, King's Version, um, 
I was one of those people that the witness had coming to this parliament. It has been here. And we all on the floor of parliament become very committed Christians. And we changed and transformed our lives as probably really changed. We may not have, we may have. The Holy Spirit knows. I think the most important thing that this parliament should focus on while we have a bill that, or the law that says that Papua New Guinea is a Christian country, but I don't think that is the important part of it. It does give an identity to the name Papua New Guinea as a Christian country, but what is more important is what I've just read in the book, that every Papua New Guinean they live internally a Christian country, and the right place to start is this floor of parliament. The 406 years old Bible has been there. Have we lived a Christian people? Have we administered ourselves leaders in the decisions and everything we've been doing in the love for our people, to making our people's life become better, that we transform them, or have we not? This is the question we ask. Because we have just had these uh, terms, uh, these terms in the books Hebrew, that write the law of God in the heart, not outside there. The presence of this Bible 406 has not uh, really seen much changes. So therefore, Mr. David Speaker, I hope that let's become a Christian country by heart. And let me just say this, this analogy. Let me say I go to Bougainville, and the Minister Timothy Masio tells me, don't you come to Bougainville, it's full of gold there. It's full of precious jewels, gum, it's just floating everywhere. You come and you'll get it. So don't come from it from kind of goes in there, very happy, cheerfully to get gold and the precious jewels there. And when I'm going there, none do I find, but I might find many, many stones. You might tell the world that Papua New Guinea is a Christian country, but when they come into Papua New Guinea, they'll find Papua New Guinea is not a Christian country. That is where the question lies. Thank you. The Honorable Governor for NCD. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, to giving me a chance to talk about this uh, um, important uh, amendment to the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, me na narbla governor, me na kolim name longen. I think uh, lo government side, you may gotta say, um, me to play uh, decide to take uh, neutral or abstain from this uh, debate or voting, one way or another. Me to play addressing from me to play. I could choose to just stay out and not uh, cast a vote for and against, but I decided to come and um, contribute to the debate so we can make rational decision. Objective decision, vote objectively. So, me got reason for me to maintain this position. So, me like asking me, me like that, to respect my views, because this uh, debate give me bring me calm. It is a you plan can do give me it's a bit of a divisive debate. I'm dividing me me go calm here. It's sensitive. So, if me abstain or against, people will say we are not Christians or we don't respect Christianity or this type of. Narrated by go on, so just the debate itself shows that why we should be cautioned about, you know, this type of uh, proposal. And some recently me, me like explaining me yet, uh, I have got the greatest respect for Christianity. Um, where I can attend services, Mr. Go, supporting more Christian uh, activities, Mr. Go, but I come from a background or minority part of our country where during our parents' time or ancestors' time, we decided to leave the Christian church, especially Catholic church. So I've been brought up in that environment. And we have tried with or without Christianity. So me like just uh, explaining this background. So. When we have this type of debate, remember this, minority people in this country, they might belong to other faith, or they might not have any faith. Christianity and stuff on constitution, <coughs> you mean? The constitution already recognizes it, so it's very profound already in the constitution. And in our practice and life, you miss, uh, you know, pronounce it more at a time. Here in parliament, we don't uh, start our session without uh, prayer, the Lord's prayer. And so it's not something me believe that we have to reassert and reconfirm. I think as the member for Kandabi talk, 
it's better to practice it and not just profess it. Uh. So, but uh, coming back to the rational, I think Prime Minister you got the rational long and Minister Attorney General. I think the main rational is that uh, it's just a label or we're just uh, describing us as a Christian country. Now, what I want to caution us is that even just by labeling, putting that label, it creates division. So let's look at the world. If you look at the world, some Islamic or Muslim line, they prefer to have an Islamic state. And who are these Islamic state? Uh, but you look at Muslim, uh, maybe uh, Pakistan is declared as an Islamic state. They have uh, pronou pronounced it. Maybe in the constitution. I think um, when in Afghanistan, now all Taliban go back, now, they've declared it as an Islamic state. Maybe Saudi Arabia is an Islamic state. Iran, of course, is one of the countries that is, you know, declared itself as an Islamic state. It's in the constitution. It is in how it runs its country from the parliament to go down. So you will yet judge him how those countries have been faring. Of course, some are developing well, but some people got problems because they come up with this label that we are an Islamic state. Okay, you may look, 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 Indonesia on the other side. It is predominantly an Islamic country. Uh, about 90% are Muslims. But they don't pronounce themselves as an Islamic state. They still recognize themselves as a secular state. Because the state is there for everyone. There's no need for them to label. Uh. You may look, 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 Christian countries, or predominantly Christian countries in the world. United Kingdom, where Anglican come along, they don't call themselves a Christian state. But they still thrive and survive, and they prosper, and they conquer the world. Uh. Germany, I think, Lutheran, they come from Germany, all the Protestant church, they come from Germany. And the Constitution does not declare uh, Germany as a, a Christian state. And they, all the Pentecostal, they came from the USA. I don't see in the Constitution of the USA that it's declared as a Christian state. But the U.S. is thriving. It's the biggest economic and military power in the world. China, well, they, uh, this, they uh, proclaim as a, 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 a communist state. So they try to adhere to live to that, they, uh, whether they practice it fully or not. But, uh, they, but they still allow Christianity to some extent. It uh, exists in China. So my main contribution to this debate is that um, I think you may should be cautious that label can also create problems, create division. Just because here we are trying to just label that our country is a Christian state. Uh, I think the second point I want to emphasize is that uh, we need to look at the state. What is the state, uh, character of the state? Yes, we are predominantly Christian, but should we uh, say that as a Christian, uh, predominantly Christian, we need to affirm this in the Constitution, or should we recognize ourselves as a secular state? And I think the founders of our state, they recognize this, and they left it as it is, that we affirm our Christian values, and we affirm our, you know, um, right to freedom of religion, but we don't declare our state is a, is a, is a Christian state because it's supposed to be a secular state. It's here for everyone. Believers, non-believers, Christians, Hindus, Muslim, Baha'i, whichever. I'm mean, like, just questioning you, Mila Dishwa. Papua New Guinea is a, a diverse nation. We have a thousand tribes, 860 languages. We have uh, many faiths. Some have no faiths. We have different cultures and tradition and song and dance. But our diversity is our strength. It's a very, you know, important asset that we have. All the, the rest of the world are becoming mono, mono culture, mono music, mono food. 
It's becoming boring. Papua New Guinea is a diverse nation. It makes us outstanding and unique. And it is our asset that we can promote to the rest of the world. So we like just questioning you know this right. You may get that right. Me know like you play line in when I in support him. Uh, you you can support him. You uh, everybody's uh, got the right to vote and choose whichever way you may like choose. All of which <coughs> line you play like support him or not. You play it. I think uh, for the law you may get a lot of I think this debate should not define like who votes for and against is a good Christian or bad Christian or good and bad Christian is Mr Deputy Speaker. It depends on your practice. Huh? It's what we do that defines us. It defines you and everybody. Not what we say. There's plenty of time when we talk about we are this and that and that. But in practice, we are not. So, I just want to emphasize that point, so we like Lucy Mosin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'll allow the member for Middle Ramu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Deputy Speaker, Lord, give me time, Lord, make him debate. Uh, Mila Tok, thank you. Also, uh, you may all get a leader blong. Country, you may stop. Uh, big person thing, um, you, may, you may all get a stop, um, you may image blong God. And we ask Tok Tok, you may all Bible blong. Now, God may create him, you may also picture blong him, you may stop. Think, think, he come. All Tok Tok, country, but you may carry him go forward long him. God want to so let me ask you to get something. You mean by no one have to talk to no good to talk to good to talk to God. God give him thing thing to you me. This is thing thing. And one to talk by take him lead to you me. Me like make him lead like debate or something. Me yet me look him to district to me na to province to me me look him. Plenty time to know the problem. Community is a big area, but church and we go sit down long end. Catholic go stop, Anglican go stop, Lutheran go stop. One 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 denomination stop long end. All people only respect him this block. Them way name Christian them stop long. Now plenty issue long. Law and order is to come up because all people only respect him God and only pray him. So time this like something come up, only say stop is. Now community stay down good. You mean government, you mean late long move, long fix him law and order. That's all time. Church and me sit down. People here respect him, only stop. They want to bless something, all fear him God now. This is the place and stop God. Even though mask and bush place, service no go back. Talk long God and me stop long and name church you go sit down long and all people here respect him now. Look out him service for government. Now, church. One black thing thing blow me. Me look look. Big plus something problem in Woklo come up. Church in Woklo go pass long. Settle him. Sit down long man married. Big plus fight he come up. Church and me go pass. Law and order he go back. Church and me go give him belly long. To plus side with them. Bring him peace he come. Man married sit down go. Drag body round long street he me look him here. And drink beer and make him here. Police Woklo fight him. Back up him now bottle make him back. Time church he go in church. Drag body and me respect him God now. And me come back and sit down he see. You will look at marijuana man round stuff here. You will not have long sent him. Policy no have long sent him too. You will look at the whole country. You will look at him. Me look him. Church him. Me go and chat. How do you talk long God now? Drug body turn him down. Now lose him ticket passing. Lose him drop. And give up long all this or something. You will lead him. You will sit down. You will scale him. One block way. You will not have long make him. You will look him one way. And you go long and you will be behind him this block. Now, by you will look at country by staff good, people by sit down good. But you will not have issue long country. When the bigger passing work come up, talk long go, go, all Christian in working my way is move him this flag go, bless him sit down good. Me support him this land, I mean, I talk, talk long and long with him. Me come legally, me start him in the long Sunday school, come long youth, me come and now me stop long this flag bless. Me summer long this flag long him, I mean, good flag. 
You may talk to the world country. You may talk to the Sanism country. But Christian, you may talk to the And one black principle, bring him along. Bring him good by development to come in. You want to by coming in the country, blame me. Sanism. Time can be a passing, but not stop. Still, but not stop. Now, you may look at the country, blame me by Sanism. Suppose you may not make it. Resource blame me by God, no light, blame him. Time can be a passing, but come up. You may not develop your country. Am I not up? Something sit down, yeah. You may not have debate long this way, you may not have to talk strong on this way. And fire, yeah. Now, this is the name Christian, yeah. King Nebuchadnezzar, God, I'm turning, thinking, blowing him, seven years, I'm cutting grass. I'm God, he make him. You know, man, make him. Papa, long Satan, I'm Mr. Speaker. Papa, long Satan, I'm God, I'm star. You may talk long custom, culture, I want him something, yeah. And Papa, long I'm God, I'm star. Now, now you may sit down there, you may go, you may, you may pick it in the God, you may stop. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, now you may not have debate, now talk, talk, planting. God give him thing, thing, maybe, and touch off. So, me, support him this love bill. You may not go talk, talk, planting. One of them, think, think, come, but please. One of them, like, no God, you may not, man, by no not, you may 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 not, God, and final man, so, and by make him. You may not go long, like, long, you may. I'm Tassel, yes. I'm not like no God, no long like me, you me. I'm not go through. But me support him this level. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, I'll allow for one more debate. And I'll call for a question. The Honorable uh, Opposition Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before we talk, talk, we are in Prime Minister talk, uh, 90, 97% of our people, of, of the people of Papua New Guinea, were consulted before this report was uh, brought before the floor of Parliament. And in contrast to that, uh, Honorable Lobosina, we have a point of order. Sorry, I make point of orders because every conversation is recorded. I didn't say 97% of Papua New Guinea was consulted. Of the sample of population consulted, 97% responded in the affirmative that this country must be declared a Christian country. A report came in in 2020. A report was sanctioned by the previous government. A report came in. This parliament had the benefit of this report. Go back and look into your files. Don't just come and see through, not reading your files, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister, your point of order is order in correction to your statement. Uh, Honorable Opposition Leader. Am I right? Why you looking report? That's an ample report, Mr. Speaker. An ample report, um, Committee of the Parliament. You know, President Timia. His own committee chairman. Honorable Saki Solomon stated very clearly that report is yet to come to the floor of this parliament. Yes, yes. And we've gone ahead and put a cut before the horse, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker. So I will kindly ask the good minister, Minister Mino against him, Mr. Bill, but let's do things correctly. This is a honorable house. We're supposed to be Christians in this house. People who follow order. God is a God of order. Now you may kiss him, report in a come to Parliament House, and we are trying to pass a bill that is and now gets fire. So I will ask to you, Mr. Che uh, speaker, through the chair, that you may delay Mr. Bill. Allow the report to come first. So that you can answer some of the questions that the Catholic Church has raised. Now, a Christian, where I've been booming this report, now I'm stuck on them, Chairman, so that you may have it, and then we can be satisfied with what the Prime Minister said. I come from a Christian family. I won't deny that. Huh? And I have my belief and faith. 
Tapos so, you cannot be judged as a Christian. It is something blow, lewa blow you, hot blow you. And something blow one one. I cannot come over and say, my deputy, Prime Minister, you're a Christian because you, you are like this and like this. You cannot see a person as a Christian from outside. It's whatever that blows from inside that reflects out of you. It makes you a Christian when your heart is correct. Also, Mr. Speaker, my debate will be very, very short. We have put the cut before the horse. Let's get it corrected first. Let's bring the report before this house. You may have a reading report. You may have a muscle report. Now we come and support this bill. We come and support this bill. Minister, I will not, uh, I will not debate against you today. My debate is very clear. Current report come, you may look at the report. You may all get satisfied that the report is in order. Let me click and support you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we like Sanabna correcting some of misconception or line law opposition. The trauma come down. We appreciate him some of brother leaders from government side. Only got right to express him thinking global. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sanabna, Minister Sanabna, Giamat Giamat, top top. This is the report that comes in 2020. Mr. Officer Leader, I'm clear that I want to say something. Committee block, Honorable Kevin Isifu, Chairman Time, making this big report. Plenty of ministers read him. Throw my task on, I'm going to look at Facebook. I'm going to look at my opinion. I'm going to come back to the parliament and talk to them. You're clear that I want to say something. This is the report, Volume 1, Volume 2, read him inside. Consulting more people, segment consulted, including churches. And by the way, Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, now committee chairman, long uh, CLRC, now I'm talk talk. I'm all not working, make him reconfirm again, including prime minister, people must vote him, including some of the fundamental issues for consistent when we take him and make him also work again. But earlier, work him stop. Son up the solo, declare a PNG Christian country. Specific sets to affirm that this law must be constructed. Now, people are behind him recommendation of people. Now, this law come inside. Call office, people. We can excuse him, or maybe you come to 2022 general election. But obviously, leader, you know me, me, last time, the last parliament. Suppose you know, I'm a report of parliament. I'm now, I'm yet now, Mark Lee. Mark Lee, you yet. Well, Prime Minister, we have a point of order. Opposition leader, what's your point of order? Prime Minister, Prime Minister seems to be contradicting what uh, his uh, chairman has said. Chairman Blame now to so talk. Report Blame is yet to be presented. Yes, he's talking about that report. If that report is already been presented, why are we wasting money on another report? Honorable Opposition Leader, your point of order is out of order. Prime Minister. Mr. Deputy Speaker, choose you these days whom you will serve. Choose you these days whom you will serve. Mr. Speaker, you get law by come, you decide law one and vote. Right below decide. You less law vote, people are not forcing you. Simple as that. Your Choice is manifested in your vote choice. And so, when it comes, you debate, but you manifest your fullest expression in your vote. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to give assurance to everybody who's not a Christian in this country. We are not removing your right to exercise practice of religion and your choices. Again, those who do not read, those who do not read Constitution, just like you haven't read this one, you'll be nodding your heart and ignoring this. Go and read section 45 of our national constitution. Mr. Speaker, I have it right here. Section 45 of our national constitution says, subsection 1, every person has a right to freedom of conscience, thought, religion, practice of his religion and beliefs, including freedom to manifest 
and propagate his religion and beliefs in such a way as to not to interfere with freedoms of others. With subsection 3 too, please. Of course, subsection 3. No person is entitled to intervene unsolicited into religious affairs of a person of different belief. Yeah. It consolidates this question. Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I, I am not a learned law, lawyer like some on the other side. Members, order. Mr. Speaker, and when this law is passed, you are fully entitled to take it to the courts. And court can read just like you, you do, you do in many occasions. But Mr. Speaker, the entire section 45 of our constitution is totally congruent to freedom, section 50 freedom rights, section 45 freedom rights, section 46 freedom rights. Mr. Speaker, this one is amendment to the preambles. And you ask practicing lawyers here, is the preambles an enforceable law? The preambles aren't enforceable law. It's definition of who we are. Is it up to you? Our government policy is us. When you're in government, you can declare otherwise. Mr. Speaker, you have freedom of right not to vote. That's your choice. We propose this law. Up to you. You make the choice. The process of parliament. Mr. Speaker, I want to give assurance to those who care to listen. This law is amendment to the preambles. It says in the original constitution or the existing law. Just for the record, so we get this debate right. It doesn't alter substantially our national identity, except it inserts in subsection 1, A, it continues on, united in one nation, it continues on, acknowledge and declare God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and Holy Spirit as the creator and sustainer of the entire universe and the source of power and authorities delegated to the people and all persons within the geographical jurisdiction of Papua New Guinea. Subsection of the fifth goal is amended. It just inserts the Christian principles and inserts another word called improved there and places the word Christian. Just in the preambles, Mr. Speaker, the enforceable law is section 45. The practice of Christianity or other religions is secured in section 45. It guarantees in that place, it anchors in that place. But in the preambles, this government on this side, this government, with no reservations, no same, we want to declare our country a Christian country. Choice is yours, Mr. Speaker. The question is that the question be put. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. no. I serve it. Honorable members, as this is the second vote, the Constitution requires that the vote must be recorded, and that is in order for the proposed law to pass. It must also be supported by a two-third absolute majority of 79 members. Honorable members, the Parliament will now vote. Clerk, please ring the bell.
So I vote later, so I'm not going to talk out the vote later now. Attendance, close the door. The question is that the proposed law without amendment be now agreed to. Those in favor, please stand. Opposition leader, stand and show your vote. Yes, I stand. I'm not asking you to talk. I just want you, my leaders, must walk in country, come up Christian. Order. I'm in Sapporo. Thank you. So leaders, please play your role. You are you are counted and you may be seated. You already been counted. It's not a matter of going to heaven or going to hell. This is to vote to the bill that is on the floor. Order.
All right, now, sir, you know, like him, you sana.